So I bought a calculator for myself. Now it's sort of not really a full blown calculator. It's much more than that. It's the TI Inspire CX and I'm going to go through the entire spiel of why I bought it, why I need it for. I'm not like a super like, you know, bachelor of sciences or like master of sciences student or anything. I don't need graphs. I don't do complex math. Um, I mainly bought it for two reasons. Uh, I had some work with it, obviously. Um, and secondly, mostly for fun. So these modern calculators, especially something like the CX2, which is sort of the higher end of educational grade calculators are basically full blown computers. And because of how software restricted these are, uh, there's hacks for them. Uh, and it's this thing's been hacked to smithereens. So is the non two C CX, the, so the only the TI Inspire CX itself. Um, they have a pretty similar software stack, so yeah, uh, you know, like stuff like why does a cal calculator need them need a mouse? Uh, why does it need a touchpad? It, it doesn't. The thing is, like, it's it's not just a calculator. It's easily like you know you can do spreadsheets and shit on it. Um. So to the point, why? Um, I needed this calculator. I needed a few unit specialized unit conversions um especially with like storage and um hexadecimals and stuff like that so one of the examples uh, that i can do uh with some of the predefined stuff i have is like add like a hexadecimal number you know something like this uh multiply that with a binary number you know put all of this in and define it as a unit so i have customs you custom units which i think i forgot to import so still getting used to the interface uh but wait i can import my library and then i can like multiply between hex and binary digits assign a unit to it so that's byte and then in the same operation convert that to another storage unit so I can select maybe gigabytes here and press enter and that kind of gives me the answer I'm not sure why it's doing it in standard, in standard form right now um, I have to change that but you get the idea it, it gives you the answer pretty easily I can change all of that and calculate basically what I wanted was to calculate this entire um you know between hex and binary data and then specify a storage unit to it calculate between that um i i, I can make my own functions that do sectors and blocks and you know, calculate and all of that stuff in in one go in one form in, in one statement and then give me the answer that, so that was sort of the main goal of buying a calculator but there were other calculators that you know i could i could basically use but the reason is you can do a lot of programming on this um and like not even um just just python so yeah it has python uh by default so you can add like a python program here and I don't know if I already have that. Yeah, you can do a bunch of stuff. Uh, but I can I can add a blank program and I can it has TI has some um 
specific libraries for it. Uh, it has its own plot lib. Um, some like Rover is this Lego kind of thing. Um, and other um, stuff. So the system draw. I think system should have UART as well. I don't know if it was like um yeah get mouse <laughs> we'll talk about get mouse um so it, it you can also program in lua i'm not going to go through the entire programming thing um the other thing is uh endless so endless is this um jailbreak which allows you to execute arbitrary code not just lua scripts not just but like you can write, it has its own SDK and you can write your own um, code for it uh, in C and assembly. So I think I've just started like a demo called Colors, just, just a demo, but like to show the speed difference between um, like, yeah, the no. To show the speed difference between um, C and Lua, we have this example. So this is the Mandelbrot example. Um, so if you if you run this one, um, this particular one's written in Lua, so you can see how slowly it calculates and it does little tricks of dividing things into tiny blocks and then calculating between those blocks um and then just finishes that off like so so you know that's done that obviously took quite a time to do but if i go back here and run the c1 then it does it much quickly so it has native uh, you can, you're running code natively on the cpu and all of that stuff and that opens up the door to a whole lot of other so like this this is another lua thing like they have the entire periodic table written in lua i can click on anything and it gives you info about that just another thing to show off um Yeah, the touchpad navigation isn't that interesting. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite things to do is um, it has a mini VMAX simulator, <laughs> emulator, sorry. And you can actually run in the entire old Macintosh um, stuff on it. So... There you go. That's like uh, the entire yeah, and, and it's actually em emulating the entire the CPU and everything. So yeah, uh, four megs of memory, system seven dot zero dot one, and all of the good stuff. Emulates a Macintosh Plus. Close that. I don't have a lot of games on it. The uh, file size is so the internal memory of this thing that's usable to me is only 100 megabytes. Again, for the price, not that much. My phone costs less. This this thing costs less than this. This is 128 gig, um, but you know it's it's fun. It's it has all these tactile switches that I like. Um, and I'm not saying it's not overpriced, it's grossly overpriced. It should not be this expensive. Um, but again, here we are. So let's shut this down. Control Q, take it open. But yeah, and then you can play Game Boy Advance games because why not? Um, you can do everything else. Um, yeah, well, I have Mario Kart part on here, so and it runs 
really well. Like it's it's surprising. I think this might be a better retro gaming console than a <laughs> than a calculator, but I'm sure a lot of people just use it as one now. Um Uh, I'm just doing something random. So you can see it, it runs fairly well. Uh, does not lag. It's pretty good, pretty accurate, very responsive. And so like after you run something like this, the obvious question is, can it run Doom? No, of, of course it can. Why, why, why would you think it won't? Um, can run Doom. Let's see. I have a bunch of games. I have Wolf 3D on it. I have Tetris on it. There's 2048, which actually works pretty well. And 2048 is in Lua, so you don't even need um the endless hack to rerun it but we're here to play doom and not lua so we'll play doom uh don't want to be hurt plenty and then enter so yeah that's actually running pretty smooth as well so this is not emulating um x86 in any way or form this is just a, a sort of a re a, a port of the game um, using SDL so there is SDL library for it so any app that uses SDL you can just um, port it pretty easily using all using the um, endless uh, SDK so as you can see everything here works just fine uh, a bit dark but apart from that should be fine so you know things work um linux is another thing uh which is kind of a issue here uh because linux itself is supposed to work but i don't think anyone has ever tested that on this model the cx2 a lot of the things here you, you would have seen a warning saying saying that it's running on a you know on a, on a compatibility mode uh etc etc um a lot of the time it's because it's using older uh inspire libraries or it's uh or 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 it's made for the inspire cx instead of the cx2 similarly with linux there's some things that don't quite work out so I have to load in everything manually. You can use a script, but I forgot to load it. So you will have to see me type everything in. And it's not a QWERTY, so it's kind of a pain to do it. All right, so after I just type boot, um, it takes a second and then it should basically boot into Linux. And here it is. Couple of issues, uh, of course. Uh, the text is way too small to be uh, legible, but it actually boots. You can see the login prompt has appeared and the Linux kernel itself has loaded up. but because it is not the original cx things are a bit different and it doesn't really uh load the keypad itself so you can't type in anything it's all it's not responsive there's no way to exit this whatsoever and at this point you only have one thing remaining which is to hard reset it 
um, well, not, not hard reset, but in a way. Uh, now, what happens and the way uh, the endless hack works is that once you reset it, it's it's a live hack. It's not uh, installable hack. So once you reset the entire thing, the um, the endless installation has been removed. So you can no longer, um, you know, run C code. Uh, but that's not an issue because it's as simple as going to the endless folder and running one simple script. So all I have to do is go here, run this, and we're done. So yeah, so here's you know something I wanted to show. Um, I think it's way too expensive for what it can do and the kind of hardware power it has the hp prime g2 is a much 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 better hardware but it's also hard to get it's it's not very easily available uh, it's based on an imx uh, 6 processor um, and that's an arm v7 running at hmm, 300 400 megahertz in that thing and you can actually boot <laughs> windows 10 on it someone actually tried that um and this is just like the old 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 arm v9 which is arm v5 not arm v9 arm 9 which is arm v5 and it can it can't really do a whole lot so yeah i guess that's about it you know uh, if you want to learn about why calculators and so expensive and why ti has this monopoly over the calculator market um, LGR has a great video on uh, the US education system and calculators so take a look there and a um, few more things it has like a port up top it has a my USB port you can actually attach a mouse to it that's another interesting thing I can show you and it has like a other port that's really not accessible by anything but TI certified parts and crap like that there's a little dock port and the need that i showed you that has like serial header and all of that stuff so that should be fun to use and hack so there's the ti hub dock dock port thingy and like teachers can buy docks for these so they can like attach multiple of them but i have this otg to micro beat port um cable here and you can literally attach if you have a hub you can attach a hub but you can attach a mouse and then just <laughs> use the mouse to... <laughs> ah this is funny um you know use the mouse to navigate everything hey hey so I have, yeah, I have like 92 megabytes of storage capacity and like 55 megabytes here. Um, you know, I, I haven't even shown off the actual graphing capabilities of that thing because again, I don't, I don't really use it. The only, um, uh, the, the only example I learned was the, um, shit, I don't even know how actions graph. Yeah, I only learned like time. Uh, sorry, sine x square produces a fun graph. <laughs> there you go. That's a that's a graph, and you can like move it around, zoom in, zoom out. And how do you zoom in? Do you have to go through the menu all the time? Yeah, you can zoom in, zoom in, and more. So, <laughs> so I mean, yeah. And move it around, take a look at the graph itself. So, 
So, you know, regular graphing calculator stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> stupid expensive. But it's fun. Um, I can play games on it. <laughs> uh, again, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was in some way entertaining in some way, um, you know. But yeah, again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.